everybody. It's Monday, October 21st, 2024. Welcome to the NFL Fantasy Football Show presented by Uber Eats. Get game day deals all season long. Me, your man, MG Marcus Grant, joined by Michael F. Floyo and Laquan Jones. We're wondering if you could spare a healthy wide receiver. Uh, fellas, at least two of you, at least you two got to celebrate NFL wins. Uh, so congratulations on that. My team literally got smoked. I think they might have just given up another weird Patrick Mahomes scramble. I don't know. Absolutely love um, to see it. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm sure you do. I mean, Florida for you. I mean, it's not officially wrapped up, but it seems like the division's kind of wrapped up for the Bills right now. Yeah, I would have traded it in for a Mets win, but uh, congrats <laughs> to you, Marcus, and the Dodgers and all that. Uh, yeah, the Mets, the Mets and Jets season kind of ended at the same point, and uh, that leads to the Bills kind of having the division wrapped up. But yeah, congrats, I guess, and all all that good stuff. You know what? I mean, like, in all honesty, like, the Mets had a great season. Uh, they, they made they made the Dodgers sweat a little bit. I will tell you, I woke up early on Sunday morning with a weird pit in my stomach, was nervous, couldn't eat much, um, but happy. You know, job's not done, but uh, we're moving on. Um, and at least gave me something to wash that nasty 49ers game out of my mouth with because that was uh, that was awful. <laughs> against Horrendous. <Kansas> City. <laughs> awful. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. We will have our biggest takeaways from week seven. Still two more games to go. We have a doubleheader on Monday night with the Ravens and the Bucks, also the Chargers and the Cardinals. So two more games to finish out the week. We'll have some waiver wire stuff and we'll start getting into our midseason awards because we have hit the halfway point of the fantasy regular season. Uh, the you know, having 17 games is sort of weird mathematically, but it does mean 14 weeks in the regular season. There's a nice breaking point uh, after week seven there. But let's get started, as we always do, with some fantasy headlines. So it was bad on the field for the 49ers. They got thumped by the Kansas City Chiefs in a Super Bowl rematch. Uh, it was bad on the field. It may be getting even worse. Brandon Ayuk left the game. Afterwards, Kyle Shanahan said they fear it is a torn ACL. Now, as of the time of us recording this show, there is no confirmation on that. But that was not a good-looking injury to his lower leg. Ended up being carted into the locker room. And it could be that he is finished for the season. Um, I'm going to ask this for Florio because I feel like Laquan is going to have too much glee in his voice. Seriously, (laughs) too much glee, so I'm not going to ask you this question. But... Look, we don't know when Christian McCaffrey is coming back. Ayuk might be gone for the year. Debo had an illness apparently yesterday that kept him off the field. Should we start to panic about this 49ers offense for fantasy? No. No. Um, <laughs> it, it stinks if you have Brandon Ayuk. It, it's even worse if, you know, you invested in him early in the summer when he was going as like a borderline first round pick. But he has one big game all year. Uh, Every other game, less than 50 receiving yards. Kittle is still out there. Debo is still out there. Uh, Once he gets over this illness, we already know Jawan Jennings could fill in nicely. Uh, They even got the rookies involved a bit yesterday in Ricky Pearsall and Jacob Cowing. So I'm not – look, maybe the 49ers aren't going to be what they were last season, which is when they kind of gave us a league winner at every position. But if you have those other pieces of the 49ers offense – I'm not panicking or freaking out or anything just yet. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, it, it it was a down year from the start. Uh, I hope for a speedy recovery and he's back next season. But I think this hurts Brandon Ayuk managers a lot more than it does the 49ers as a whole. Well, we saw George Kittle still have a nice game yesterday for fantasy. Six catches for 92 yards. You're right. At some point, Debo Samuel is going to be back. And they're not going to be facing a Steve Spagnolo defense every week. I will say that as a fan, I had a bad feeling about this when Steve Spagnuolo during the week was super complimentary of Brock Purdy and out here saying like, oh, he has no weaknesses. That to me was the epitome of the enemy speaks softly and carries a knife like Spags was some sort of wide receiver or something out here. So uh, <laughs> maybe the result was not super surprising. Uh, when it was all said and done Uh, over to Cleveland where Deshaun Watson left the game with a non-contact injury it has been confirmed that he has torn his Achilles he will have surgery his season is over Laquan we did see Nick Chubb come back and he got back in the end zone and that was really great really fun to see we saw Cedric Tillman step in and have a nice game for fantasy but I mean, are we are we believing in Tillman? Is there anybody there that you still count on besides Nick Chubb? 
Uh, Cedric Tillman is a nice wide receiver replacement after Amari Cooper was shifted off to Buffalo, but David Njoku is really the only pass catcher we can put our hat on to say, yeah, we could put him in starting lineups and he might put some type of product out there. But when you look at Jerry Judy, it just feels like he's checked out of his frustrations. They're going through, you know, multiple quarterbacks right now, you know, with DTR and Jameson Winston. Like, who knows, you know, moving forward if Jerry Judy is going to be valuable. But when you look at David Njoku, he's the only one getting this offense any type of spark to be able to go downfield and create some scoring opportunities he's a big body target so therefore if it's dtr if it's winston they'll be able to check out him in in the end zone so i definitely feel as though like i can only trust david Njoku moving forward and that kind of puts superman nick chubb in that because he had that touchdown but before that the production was really nasty for fantasy uh, yeah, very interested to see what the quarterback plan is going to be. I know yesterday people were saying it, it looks like it could be DTR, but he also suffered a finger injury, which is why you saw Jameis Winston get in late in the game. Actually led them to a touchdown right near the end of that James. game. So I think it should be Jameis. It I think a lot of people Jameis. feel like it should be Jameis. Uh, yeah. We'll see what this, what direction Kevin Stefanski is. I mean, look, Jameis was made inactive. He came in because he was the emergency quarterback he on Sunday. The irony of them demoting him because fans were cheering his name in past games and <laughs> that he theory. is the only Browns quarterback that throws a touchdown. <laughs> Crazy. I mean, Brown's going to Brown. That's uh, pretty Winston much all I can say. still <laughs> ball, man. I don't know why people doubt him. He could still ball. If, Put him out there. If nothing else, I think he just gives you more hope in that offense yeah. than they've had uh, all year long. So I don't know why you wouldn't give him a shot, but He's we'll see what guy. we'll see what direction Stefanski <laughs> and the Browns decide to go in. Uh, all right, so we're talking about James Winston maybe being a hero for the Brown. It's time for Fantasy Heroes presented by Subway, the guys who likely helped you out, at least if you had the foresight to put them in your lineup. Everybody howled when the Steelers were making a quarterback change, but Russell Wilson gave you almost 25 fantasy points, a pair of passing touchdowns, a rushing touchdown as well. Jameer Gibbs doing Jameer Gibbs things, 116 rushing yards and two touchdowns, four catches for 44 yards, 32 points for him. I'm on Ross St. Brown. It was sunny in Minneapolis, and the Sun God showed out. 25.2 points, 8 catches, 112 yards, and a touchdown. David Njoku, we just talked about him. 10 catches for 76 and a score. That's good for 23.6. Will Lutz made four field goals and three extra points for the Broncos. 17 points there, and the Broncos defense going back to Thursday night, just obliterating the Saints. They scored 20 fantasy points there um let's get to our biggest takeaways though from week seven uh, laquan what did you see that uh, you think we can build on going forward uh looking at the titans offense i mean i honestly feel that mason rudolph gives the pass catchers the best chance to be fantasy relevant i mean you avoid some of the bonehead mistakes the turnovers and plus he you could take the veteran approach here with mason rudolph he has a lot of football behind him so therefore moving forward there's guys that you see like chicago the, the tight end over there or you even see the rever the the revive of calvin ridley but more so he's not going to be turning the ball over as frequent on the titans offense and he's also converting on third down he's throwing the ball away he's not trying to play hero ball but it's a matter of trying to figure out moving forward do we put will levis back in there or which fantasy pass catcher could we honestly trust you know week to week but that's soon to be told you know moving forward but i think mason rudolph just gives this offense a spark that they desperately needed it's definitely a style change right because will levis is good to throw yolo balls which sometimes leads to hilarity <laughs> uh thanks and sometimes it leads to some hilarious outcomes Mason Rudolph's very much going to be conservative. He's going to check down. It was why, I mean, look, I like Tony Pollard going into the week anyway. It was a reason I got really excited yeah. about Tony Pollard uh, in that opportunity, even though, you know, it didn't really happen. It was just a meh game for Pollard. Um, so we'll see. Right now, Will Levis, they're saying week to week with that shoulder injury. So we'll see what happens coming up in week eight. Uh, Florio, what did you learn from this week? Mason Rudolph doesn't seem like a conservative guy to me. Um, I learned that George Pickens <laughs> is uh, is the breakout, I think, is coming here. And this is something that uh, I, I doubted him this week because of the matchup, and that was wrong. But coming into the season, I was like, I want George Pickens on my fantasy teams. And it was because we thought Russell Wilson would be the quarterback last week, week nine. Second most targets, second most yards, his first touchdown. Uh, it was his best passer rating when targeted air yards. But I went back this morning and I watched all of his deep targets from this season. The difference is 
that Russell Wilson will just put more air under it. It's not like Russell Wilson went out and and balled out on those deep balls or anything like that. Like one of them hit the Jets defender first. Another one, George Pickens made a phenomenal sideline grab. Uh, the difference though is like Justin Fields puts a lot of velocity and it's more of a line drive. And it's harder for Pickens to make those adjustments uh, in air or something like that. Whereas Wilson is like, yeah, I might underthrow it, but I'm going to give you a chance where you could legitimately come to a full stop potentially and just go up like it's a rebound in basketball. And in one-on-ones in those situations, I, I do think George Pickens will win more often than not. So maybe still a little bit boom or bust, but the arrow is certainly pointing up for George Pickens right now. Which, uh, again, it sort of brings us back to where we were, say, in August when we were drafting Steelers. It was with the idea that Russell Wilson was going to be the starter and he was going to elevate all those pass catchers. Yes, we liked Justin Fields and we assumed he was going to play. But we also, I think, sort of knew that Justin Fields was going to be good for the Justin Fields managers and maybe not for anybody else uh, who was invested in the Steelers offense. Speaking of quarterbacks, uh, in Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes isn't a thing, but Kareem Hunt is uh, watching that game yesterday between the Chiefs and the 49ers. I understand, look, the Niners secondary had a really good game, but it was another week where Patrick Mahomes struggled to generate anything offensively, uh, finished the day with 154 passing yards, two interceptions, no touchdowns, another game where Patrick Mahomes gave you less than 14 fantasy points it's been a struggle for him. In fact, he has not reached 17 fantasy points in a game this season. They aren't able to get the ball downfield really to any of their wide receivers. Noah Gray was the leading pass catcher for the Chiefs on Sunday. And now Juju Smith-Schuster, has he left with a hamstring injury. He's already been ruled out for this week's game. So what little they had to help uh, catch the football, not going to be there. In the meantime, Kareem Hunt's had a couple of nice games back-to-back. -back. Had the two rushing touchdowns against the 49ers on Sunday. Went for over 100 yards in a score the week before. Curious to see what happens if we see more Samaj P. Ryan. We'll see if Clyde edwards Delaire is able to get back in there. But for now, uh, very much the Kareem Hunt show, which in the year of our fantasy football lord 2024, I did not think I would be saying out loud. There we are. Um... We, as I mentioned, are hitting the midway point of the fantasy regular season. Felt like it's a good time to give out some awards. So we will start because I've learned my lesson, fellas. I'm not going to end the show with the downer <laughs> award. We'll, we'll end with a positive award. So right now we'll do the downer, and that's the biggest disappointment. So, uh, Laquan, for the first seven weeks of the season, who has broken your heart? Don Kincaid, man. Floria, I don't know if you got to get on the phone over there to see what's going on to get him the ball more, but it's more so a disappointment in the halfway mark. Based on a mixed bag of why we're disappointed, it's like the cost that we paid for him in drafts. We know he's uber talented. He's getting the volume, but he's just not getting the yards. He's not getting the touchdowns. Like We know this dude could be the focal point of this Bills offense, even though we understand they have this new identity as a low-pass volume offense. Josh Allen's still doing Josh Allen things, but it's like it's not happening for Dalton Kincaid on a week-to-week -week basis. And it's like, you probably missed out on some tight end opportunities to trade him. But again, tight ends were down bad in the fantasy streets. So there's really no way you could probably get that trade off to begin with. But you're not going to bench him because, again, he's getting the vibe. I can't see myself benching a tight end that's getting 20% of the target share. So you're just kind of just stuck with him. You're just sitting with him. But there is hope. Back-to-back -back weeks, he did have season highs of receiving yards. So hopefully he could build on that on the back end of the season. But... Yeah, real nasty work right here. I think it's interesting, and you know, Flora, you might be able to speak to this a little bit more. Last year, they funneled a lot of those targets through just a couple of guys. It was Stephon Diggs and Dalton Kincaid. This year, it feels like Josh Allen's spreading the ball out a little bit more. Yeah, I, I think part of it is that we overestimated that Kincaid can be a team's number one. I'm not sure he can be, but... Uh, I think Amari Cooper is going to open up so much for everything else. Teams going against the Bills are like, if we take out the middle, short middle of the field where Kincaid and Shakir operate, we'll, we could stop this Bills passing attack. That all changes once you incorporate Amari Cooper more into the offense, I think, at least. All right. Uh, keep it going, though. Who is your disappointment so far? Team-wide award to the only undefeated team in the <laughs> NFL. Um <laughs> I know their fans aren't disappointed right now, but if you, like Marcus, you just touched on Mahomes perfectly. Uh, like, 
Bo Nix has more fantasy points than he does right yes. now. Like, yeah. like that's where we're at. Daniel Jones has more fantasy points than Patrick Mahomes right yeah. now. Travis Kelsey is averaging less than nine fantasy points per game, 41 yards per game. He does not have a touchdown. The two Chiefs that I think we could have really relied upon in, a, in Isaiah Pacheco and Rasheed Rice, they're gone. We don't know when, if at all, either one of them and, and add Marquise Brown to that if they're coming back. But then Xavier Worthy's been insanely boomer bust. There's no Chiefs wide receiver you could start with any sort of confidence right now. Travis Kelsey's disappointing. Patrick Mahomes is disappointing. Kareem Hunt is their best fantasy asset right now outside of their defense. That is how far we have fallen with the mighty Chiefs offense. Look, best team in the league, Super Bowl favorites, probably going to win their third in a row. I get all of that. But for fantasy, this team is a nightmare. It is abysmal. And if you covered up their names, they'd all be on the waiver wire outside of Kareem Hunt. (laughs) No, 100%. And people have been asking me, I'm sure they're getting the questions too, can you drop Patrick Mahomes? And at this point, I think the answer is absolutely yes, because yeah. uh, he's just the name pretty much at this point. Or trade. Uh, for me, my big disappointment is Sam Laporta. And I mean, this is a guy that was going off the board as the first tight end in pretty much every fantasy league, or at least the vast majority of them. And scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Right now, he is the tight end 19, uh, and and that might be even higher than you would have thought for a guy like Sam Laporta. Just one game with double-digit fantasy points, just one touchdown. Uh, has not had 60 receiving yards yet in a game. Sure, we thought Jamison Williams was going to make an impact. I don't think we thought it was going to be this impactful, what he has done, both for the Lions and what he has done to Sam Laporta. Um, it's getting harder and harder to start him every week, even in a year where tight end production is down. Sam Laporta really has just been one of the major disappointments. And with the Lions playing well and Jamison Williams playing well, I don't see it changing anytime soon. All right, so those are our disappointments. We will get to a happier award coming up after the break. We'll also have the waiver wire. Stick around for more of the NFL Fantasy Football Show. Time for the waiver wire presented by YouTube TV. Florio, who should we be looking at this week? It's a good quarterback week if you need one. Sam Darnold, I I don't know why he's still available in over 40% of leagues. Drake May has been balling out since he got the starter gig. Tua Tungavailoa is set to return to practice with the hopes of returning to games this week. And then Jameis Winston, they said DTR, not sure if he will be able to play or not in this upcoming week. Tyrone Tracy Jr. was still the lead back, even with Devin Singletary back. Tank Bigsby just continues to run so well that he needs to be added right now. Ray Davis, a lot of it came late, but he still has played really well these last two games. Alexander Madison remained the lead runner, even with Zamir White returning. Tyler Algier is one injury away from being an every week must start. Plus, he's kind of got own standalone value. And Dearness Johnson is the pass catching back as long as Travis ETN is sidelined. Then a couple of Packers. Romeo Dobbs and Dontavian Wicks, you want pieces of this Packers passing attack. Ricky Pearsall uh, and K- him and Jawan Jennings are going to have to step up for the 49ers now. Trey Tucker, someone's going to have to get volume there for the Raiders. Tutu Atwell uh, getting a lot of volume with the big guys sidelined. Alec Pierce, uh, Demario Douglas, don't overlook what he has done with Drake May. Hunter Henry especially, do not overlook what he did. Uh, in London this past week. And then a couple of deeper tight ends, Laquan's boy, Jonu Smith, and Let's Jacobian go. Sanders, who <laughs> is getting volume from Andy Dalton in the Panthers' offense. Hey, yeah, Bucky Brooks put us on to him. That's right. Uh, Bucky Brooks, way back uh, beginning oh, of the yeah. season. Uh, as well. uh, Laquan, if you are, you know, if you're spending a bunch of fab or you got your top waiver priority, who are you looking at this week from that list? There's a lot of guys. Drake May, honestly, is that top priority at the quarterback position for me just based on how he's been playing. Back-to-back games with 19 and 20 fantasy points. He's playing better than Patrick Mahomes right now, and that sounds crazy <laughs> to say for a rookie. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, all right, let's get to some more awards as we get to our midseason fantasy awards. Most valuable player. I said we ended on a little bit of a happier note there. Um, so who is your MVP at this point, Laquan? 
Joe Mixon, I mean, he's shown up and showed out in every game he's played full. 26 plus fantasy points in every game he's played in a full. And I cannot be more happier for him because he makes this Texans offense still dangerous, even without their top playmaker in Nico Collins. Just look at how he's moving right now. This is the quickest and the fastest we've probably seen Joe Mixon play. Like he just looks like a completely revised running back right now. I mean, he's playing great. This is the best start he's had fantasy wise in his career so hopefully he keeps it going because he's definitely looking like a top three running back this season all right so we got a veteran running back uh, for one mvp candidate florio who is your most valuable player Jaden daniels and it would have been uh, so much sweeter had he not gotten hurt yesterday <laughs> and i could come out here and say he was the fantasy qb1 uh he is the fantasy qb2 right now behind only lamar jackson but if you have Jaden daniels you did not pay that lamar jackson price you didn't pay the anthony richardson price or the kyler murray price you waited and got him probably as a borderline qb1 maybe even some of you took him as your second quarterback now he is an every week must start gonna win rookie of the year it looks like and uh every week he just continues to amaze doesn't matter the matchup nothing he is getting the most out of this offense and uh just please be okay jade and my my fantasy teams really need you the, the commanders really need you and all of that but yeah getting a, a qb the potential qb1 at around like nine price that that puts him in the running for mvp i think you know, and it's funny because you talk about, you know, you didn't pay the Lamar Jackson price, but I'm seeing a lot of people, and it's not really a surprise, who both who had both Lamar Jackson and Jaden Daniels because you could go early and get Lamar, and maybe if you wanted to just sort of, you know, kick the tires, you could get Daniels a little bit later. And so now a lot of people sort of have this weekly dilemma of who do I start, in which case I'm like, trade one of them. Probably trade yes, Jaden Daniels, one. but, but yeah. trade one of them for sure because you don't want this headache every single week. Uh, my MVP – Going back to the veteran running back well, Derrick Henry, who we all wanted this to happen. We all wanted him in Baltimore. We got our wish. And usually when we do, it goes sideways on us. This has not been the case. You see that the 22.6 fantasy points per game uh, so far this season. He has scored at least one touchdown in every single one of the Ravens games. Of course, he plays uh, on Monday night against the Buccaneers. We'll try to keep that streak going. But as good as he has been so far this year, and right now, he leads the NFL in rushing yards. The thing we know about Derrick Henry is that he gets better later in the season. When the weather gets colder in November, in December, uh, he gets tougher because you have DBs making business decisions when they see El Tractor Cito coming around the corner with the football. You see him with one of those nasty, vicious stiff arms that turns into a meme at some point later on in the season. Derrick Henry has been everything we wanted him to be. And somehow, I feel like he hasn't even reached the ceiling yet. Eight rushing touchdowns, one receiving touchdown. We talked about him maybe reaching 20. That is very much still in the cards for, <laughs> for Derrick Henry in 2024. There you go. So those are all the players that we are loving through the first seven weeks of the season. It is time now for Moments We Love, presented by Barefoot Wine. And as we were scouring the interwebs to find a moment we loved this season, turns out uh, it takes place with Mike Florio's Buffalo Bills, where the rookie steps in to actually help the veteran, Keon Coleman, kind of explaining what he was doing by uh, kind of pointing some things out to Amari Cooper. Yeah. Did you tell him what to do on the touchdown? On his touchdown? Nah, man. Cause he know the plays. He know the plays. <laughs> I just help him confirm it. That's all it was. It looked like there was some kind of communication between you two, though, before, before the snap. That's the name of the game. You never can get fined for over-communicating. Make never. sure everybody doing what they need to do. Yeah. Uh, you got to love Keon Coleman, right? I mean, Florio, I know I'm sure Bills fans absolutely love Keon Coleman. Just for, not for just what he does on the field, but just for who he is as well. Yeah, and watching this game as closely as I was, I was like... At this play, I'm sitting there like, Amari doesn't know what he's doing right now. And then three seconds later, I'm like, oh, he, he knows to catch a touchdown, though. Uh, <laughs> I love the line that, that Keon said. I also tweeted out yesterday, because remember after week one, everyone was like, how did, how did the NFL let the Chiefs get Xavier Worthy? I tweeted out, how did the NFL let the Bills get Keon Coleman? Because he went for 125 yards and That's nearly cool. had a touchdown. Like, great person and a good player as well. Yeah, uh, it's been a whole lot of fun. I mean, and look, Laquan, like sometimes 
you know, you're just you're the new guy, right? You need somebody to, to help you. It doesn't matter yeah. how old or young they are. You just you know, sometimes you just need somebody to kind of help you go. Veteran response by Keon Coleman too, basically covering up like, nah, he know the play. He's like, what are you talking about? You're just, I just confirmed it for him. Like that that was such a solid veteran move right there. I love that. <laughs> so, uh, congrats to uh, Keon Coleman and Amari Cooper and the Bills offense. Looking forward to seeing what they have in store for us for the rest of the season. But that's a good place for us to sort of put this one down for uh, today. That is it. We are done. We appreciate you hanging out with the NFL Fantasy Football Show presented by Uber Eats. You know the drill. Tell two friends to tell two friends. Rate, review, and remember, deadlines are great. I love the whooshing sound they make as they rush by. Be safe, take care of yourselves, and we will talk to you tomorrow.